Hello, it's a beautiful fall day here in Northern Arizona and today's video topic is the 10 stupidest things that I remember happening here in the state of Arizona. Actually, I have lived through six of these things on my list and they came out of my memory, but the top one on the list, number one, happened before I was born, but I thought it was too stupid for me to leave off of the list. So. Uh, before I begin, my name is Dawn Dickinson. I live here in beautiful Sedona, Arizona, and I do sell real estate in Verde Valley, Flagstaff, Prescott Valley area. So if you have a real estate question, my contact information is below in case you want to get in touch with me. So I came up with this list based on things that I remember from the past and a little bit of Googling to give me information to see if my memory was correct. And I tried to pick stories that did not result in people dying but unfortunately there are two on this list that did result in people uh, being killed and the number one thing on my list we're going to go back to 1931 and it does involve a double hollow my side so before i begin i want to let you know i do have my love bird in here with me today because if she is on my shoulder she's more quiet than if i lock her out of the room and then she'll stand by the door and squawk and it's just easier for me to let lovey the love bird stay here in the video i hope you don't mind so the first case on my list goes back to October 10th, no, October 16th, 1931, and it's called the Trunk Murders with Winnie Ruth Judd. Now, Winnie was in a situation with a couple of her friends, and apparently they were competing for the affections of the same man, and Winnie ended up killing two of her friends with a 25 caliber pistol. So at that point she's like what do I do with the bodies? Somehow she was taking a trip to Los Angeles so she decided let's dismember the bodies and put them in a trunk. So she took two trunks, maybe a hat box and a couple other pieces of luggage, dismembered one completely in the trunk, the other one half in the trunk, but anyhow two bodies in the trunk, loaded them in the cargo hold on a trip to Los Angeles. Well you could probably imagine even in the cold weather of October the body started to decompose, emitting a foul smell, fluids leaking out of the trunk, and um, the people from the train were like, can you let me open the trunk? And she's like, no, I don't have the key. So she gets to Los Angeles, she goes on the run, the police pick the locks on the trunk and they find two dead dismembered bodies in there. So a week later she turns herself in. She is convicted of first degree murder but she eventually went into the insane asylum. But that is the trunk murders back in 1931. How stupid are you to put dead bodies on a trunk to a trip to Los Angeles. So that makes number one on my list. Now number two. We're going back to 1991. This poor man named Ray Horn. Um, this case was called the Snaggletooth Killer. So Ray Horn lived in the area in Phoenix. He frequented a bar where a bartender was murdered and sexually assaulted and they found her body and the police decided, oh, Ray Horn goes to that bar. Let's, you know, focus on him. So they spend all of their time focusing on poor Ray Horn. He had an, so Ray Horn had an anomaly in his tooth and there was a bite mark on the victim's body and the expert witnesses said that bite mark matched Ray Horn, which it didn't, but uh, they convicted him anyhow of this murder and Ray Horn in 1992 goes to jail for 10 years. Two of them are on death row. Well, back again now, it's like 2002, 2003, where they're doing DNA matches and they run a DNA sample of Ray Horn to the fluid they find on the victim's body and there's no match. Wow, Ray Horn didn't do it. And then there apparently was a person in the area who was a convicted sense offender that they, other people thought was probably the killer, but they didn't want to look at him. And so, they found that this person, after all, was the killer. Ray Horn was not the killer. They let Ray Horn out of jail in about 2002. Now, what is amazing is that I saw interviews of him when he was released. He was thrilled. He's saying, thank you, Lord, for letting me out. Not hostile at all. I'd have been wild. I'd have been swinging punches if you put me in jail for 10 years. But he was good about it. But he did sue Maricopa County and received a $14 million settlement in 2003 and a $3 million settlement from the city of Phoenix. So maybe that will teach you not to be so stupid 
uh, prosecutors, juries, and police when these types of cases come up in the murder. So that was number two. Now, number three happened in November 2003. Now, I remember this one because it happened not long before my father passed away. And I remember we had a conversation about how stupid is this, this thing that's happening. So it involved Sheriff Joe Arpaio. So now, if you're not from Arizona or even Maricopa County, uh, Sheriff Joe Arpaio was a very controversial sheriff here in Arizona for many years, uh, actually Maricopa County, right? And most people either loved him or they hated him. Now, I was like, you know, I didn't really care either way. I did like the fact that he was hard on crime, but I didn't like the fact that he occasionally did something so stupid like this case that makes number three on my list. So this happened in November 2003. Sheriff Joe gets wind that they're running some prostitution rings out of people's homes. And he runs a sting in uh, November where he arrests something like 45 women and 29 John, something like that. And he discovers that one of the women is a 60 year old woman who lives in Sun City West and she's servicing men in Sun City West for $125 a shot. Ooh, that's so terrible. So terrible that now they focus a sting on Sun City West themselves and they rest dozens of homes, like maybe 33 homes with prostitution happening, uh, Johns, and they put these women in jail. And now I don't know if they were just in jail overnight or if they spent a lot of time in jail. And then they're threatening because now this is a felony. It's a felony to have prostitution out of your house. And now if it's a felony, the government is gonna take away the woman's house, take away their home and now they'll be homeless because, ooh, they're doing some prostitution with old people in Sun City West. So now I don't know if they ever seized anyone's property as a result or how long these people stayed in jail. I just know that, oh my gosh, could you think of any more stupid way to spend sheriff deputy time and taxpayer money busting a bunch of prostitutes who aren't asking the government, oh, I need money, government, because you don't pay me anything for social security. They're being a little bit invented, and we're gonna put all these ladies in jail, and we're gonna take their houses away. So that number three on my stupid, stupid things that happened in Arizona list, and unfortunately, it did involve Sheriff Show. Joe Pio, who was controversially. He did good things and he did some dumb, dumb whoppers like that one. So that is number three. Now, number four happened in uh, July 21st, 2010. We actually have two of them that happened that same month and it was the Tempe Town Lake Dam explosion. Okay, so in late 1990s, like 97 to 99, now I went to ASU in the 1980s when there was nothing. You know, there's a college, there's a dry riverbed and a bunch of old, old shops. Actually, I liked it better then. But then in the late 90s, they decided to come up with this damming of the Salt River and building uh, Tempe Town Lake. So they put these two big inflatable rubber dams. Now there's the key word right there, rubber. We're putting rubber dams in Arizona, in Maricopa County, where down at the dam bed, it's probably 150 degrees in the summertime. And then these dams were built so they can maybe deflate them a little bit, maybe let water run over. That's gonna keep them cool. Well, in about 2007, they realized, oh, this isn't gonna work. We're gonna have to replace these dams every 10 years. Oh, thanks. I'm sure tax papers were, taxpayers were thrilled about that. So about 2010, oh, actually it was 2010, it was in June, uh, July 21st, they're getting ready to replace one of the dams, but they weren't quick enough and it exploded. It burst all the water going downstream. Tempe Town Lake is completely drained and oops, let's fix that. So thankfully on this blunder of engineering, nobody got killed. But can you imagine if you were downstream when that thing happened? Um, luckily, nobody got killed in that one. But come on, you couldn't see this in advance that this was not a good design. And I think they probably just put more rubber dams. So watch out in about 10 years if you're going to Tempe Town Lake again. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure I trust those dams. So again, now number five happened in July 28th, 2010. Now I remember this one clearly because I didn't live very far from it, but um, this was a sting. They did an undercover sting. So Chandler police, now I have a home in Chandler. I'm surprised Chandler police would do something this stupid, but they were going to do a 
the pot bus to pot bus. They were gonna buy 500 pounds of pot from some dealers in South Phoenix or something. They'd been setting this up for uh, weeks or months and here it was. They show up, Phoenix undercover cops, and they show up at the house with a bunch of money pretending they're gonna buy pot. And somehow they got tipped off and there's a huge shootout, huge shootout. Um, one cop killed at the scene, another critically injured. I don't know if he survived, so I'm gonna count him as dead and two suspects dead. Uh, several more wounded, I don't know if they passed away after that, but you have at least four people dead for a pot bus. Now, yeah, drug dealing is terrible, maybe, but remember back in 2010 is when Arizona passed and made medical marijuana legal. And now in 2020, marijuana is legal for everybody. So why would you spend all that effort on a sting that re results in four people dying when we have so many more urgent issues impacting the state of Arizona and that's how you're spending your time. You're gonna bust pot dealers who are now totally legal and free to go, but now four people were dead. Four people dead, families, 35 year old cop, widows, children without dads, stupid, stupid, stupid. So that makes number five on my list. Now number six, we're going to 2019 now. Fortunately, this had a little impact, nobody died. But so I lived in Ahwatukee up until 2019. In fact, I waited for years for this project, the Loop 202. It's going to eliminate congestion. It would take the 202 and it extended all the way south of South Mountain and intersected with Interstate 10 because there's a un godly amount of traffic, especially between the I-17 going west on Interstate 10. So yes, it's a good project. Now it's unfortunate that they didn't finish it until one month after I sold my Ahwatukee home. Now realize I lived in Ahwatukee for over 20 years waiting for the day where I could go to see my sister, say in a half hour, rather than taking an hour to go all the way around South Mountain. So yay, it's good that it is done, but why? did they spend all that time and make the loop toe too now comes out and it intersects with uh, the I-10 the I at like 59th Avenue. Well, 59th Avenue, there's still a ton of traffic on the 10, a ton of traffic. And now you've got another freeway merging in with it at 59th Avenue. So now the traffic is still ungodly and unbearable uh, at 59th Avenue West. So why did they not take the 202 all the way out to say 100th Avenue when the Loop 101 comes from the north? Why not bring it out further? You're out there with your explosives and your big heavy equipment and your construction workers. Why not just extend it another 10 miles and relieve the enormous traffic condition that we have on the Interstate 10 west of the 17? No, no, we're gonna bring it out to the 59. We're gonna brag about how great it is. Well, again, dumb, 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 but nobody died. So I guess maybe it wasn't that bad. Now, my last one on the list happened in July 29, 2020. So this just happened last year. Um, I couldn't believe how dumb this was, but yet I never got an answer on why it happened. But it was again in Tempe Town Lake where there was a train coming through going on the bridge that goes over the esteemed Tempe Town Lake and the train derailed. So it derailed, train cars falling off of the bridge, catching fire, exploding. You've got huge, huge plumes of dust. Now two of these trains out of the eight or 10 that were on fire, two of them had hazardous waste materials in them. So now you got a cough. The hazmat team out, the whole area is being evacuated. No, was the biggest uh, four alarm fire I think that the uh, Phoenix Fire Department had seen in many years. Now I don't know why it derailed because that was a little bit hush hush. I mean if I want to spend two hours on the internet I probably could find the reason. But I'm sure it was something stupid. I can be sure something dumb happened to make this train derail in the city of Tempe and cause all that chaos. Uh, but I can't tell you at this point what it is. I just know that it was dumb. So that is it. That is the list of the things that I, from living in Arizona since 1970, remember as being dumb, 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 dumb. This video again, seven dumbest things that happened in the state of Arizona 
and I hope you enjoyed my list. So if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Maybe think about subscribing, coming back again next week for something new because I post every week a video about topics that pertain to living in the state of Arizona and most often the northern part of the state. So I sell real estate here in Sedona, Verde Valley, Flagstaff, and Prescott. If you have a real estate question, uh, feel free to give me a call, a text, a email message, and I will get back to you. Maybe not immediately, but I usually get back to people the very same day, and I would love to work with you because my very favorite clients are the ones that come from my YouTube channel. So that's it. Hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you back here again next week.